upstairs to week seven of my ketamine treatment. The practice is intense emotion, especially. See, there goes my wife and my dog for a nice little stroll, beautiful day. They're heading in on the trails. I should be with them. Instead of just staring at them through the window. There's actually been many times when I go get a coffee and there'd be no K-cups in that carousel there that I would just skip my coffee instead of just coming down here to get the K-cups. Like that's how bad things get sometimes. It's like just to go to the basement to get a couple of these. Uh, how, I don't, like how does that become overwhelming? I don't understand it. Can't just have one kind in there. So we, we had to have two, breakfast blend and Pacific blend. There's a third one we have there recently. It's kind of in between the two, a medium roast, I guess. That's pretty good, but we're out of those. I guess I'll have to get my wife to pick some up this evening from Costco. Oh, gravity. Isn't there something nice about a filled up carousel of coffee cups? Da -da 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 -da. As you can see, we got quite a bit of snow this year, all in February, almost up to the top of my deck. That could be part of my mood too. I'm so sick of that snow blower and my neighbors. <laughs> Cheers. <clears throat> so yesterday I had a psychiatrist appointment. I don't know if you watched my last video or not, but I'd had a bit of a breakdown and was having a very rough time with it. <clears throat> so anyway, after having a chat with my psychiatrist who's also overseeing my ketamine treatment, he's still trying to reassure me that 
it can still work even though in some people like myself it takes a bit longer for it to kick in for the effects to start showing that that basically for me not to give up on it yet I still got another two sessions for sure left so uh, something might come out of those yet who knows but uh, other than that he basically reiterating 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 sorry um, I forget what I was going to say because I was too busy reiterating it. Yes, he was reiterating, reiterating the, uh, <laughs> yes, I laughed. I smiled. I, I'm going to keep this on here. I'm not going to edit that out. Basically, he uh, reinforced the, uh, the idea that I need to try to do things that are going to activate this ketamine. It's like this fertilizer in my brain and I need to put crap on it. Actually, that's already crap. I need to put nutrients, I guess, in it. And, uh, and that would involve going way beyond my comfort zone and pushing myself to get out and, and do things, which I am struggling really hard to do. Um, yeah, because I can't, I, can, I, I can't get out of the house right now. And uh, it's... Uh, it's a weird feeling. It's like I feel boxed in, confined, <clears throat> and there's all these risks uh, with leaving the house. And they're irrational and silly, but yet they're all legitimate obstacles to me uh, that keep me from getting out. And I'm not sure where I was going with this. So I'm going to pause. I also had a good chat today with... Uh with someone from Veterans Affairs and she is kind of pushing the same thing that my psychiatrist has been pushing and my psychologist has been pushing and that's to get an occupational therapist on board with me to help me through these things that I can't get the motivation or drive to do or to even the confidence to do I guess is the better way to put it Anyway, they, they're all mentioning occupational therapists, and I, deep down I know that's something that would probably benefit me, but yet at the same time, it terrifies me, so therefore I'm like, no, I don't want it. Plus, I had one in the past, and it didn't work out so well, so that's kind of stuck in my head, too. So I'm a little bit biased about that. And I'm just, <clears throat> I think overall right now, I'm just overwhelmed with appointments, like, ketamine appointments, psychiatrist appointments, psychologist appointments, plus other appointments in between, and uh, and just adding more appointments is just, uh, I know, I'm whining. Like, uh, the appointments are overwhelming. It's almost like death by treatment or something, it kind of feels like, but yet I know the treatment helps and I need it. It's it's one of those paradoxes or conundrums or whatever you want to call it, because it's uh, yeah I'm I'm my own worst enemy I know that and uh, yeah it's uh, it's complicated when you are fighting yourself as well as everything else. I feel like I need to explain a little bit more on this overwhelming from appointments. I'm the type that I can only handle one task at a time. Just one task. You throw us something, a second task in there or a second variable and, and I shut down. I just can't function. And it's like that with appointments. When I look at my calendar, Say, for example, tomorrow I have an appointment, which I do. I have a ketamine appointment. Therefore, I cannot plan anything between now and that ketamine appointment because I got that appointment. And, I mean, I've been in the past, I had an appointment three months down the road, and I couldn't do anything for three months because of that appointment because that's all I could focus on. And that's why I get overwhelmed with with having appointments on my calendar, on my schedule all the time, because each one, like I anticipate the next one and it works me up, it gets me 
like I dread these uh, these appointments, and and it's uh, yeah, it's hard. It's uh, funny as I was recording that at the end of it, you see me get a little all confused. That was my psychiatrist office calling to book another appointment. So anyway, it just it just goes to show, uh, and it's not just with medical appointments or or whatever it's with anything like i like lately we've had a lot of snow falling and i'm responsible for keeping the driveway clear because my wife she's working my son is in school or working so i mean i'm home i keep it clear and i'm afraid to leave the house because the plow might come because i have that commitment that obligation to my driveway that I have this fear of leaving and it being filled up with snow and I need to be home to take care of that. And I know you're probably like shaking your head thinking you're an idiot, but that's that's how serious it is. I will not leave because the snow plow might come by. It's cr as crazy as that. In case you never noticed, towards the beginning of this video, I had my generator going. I just want to acknowledge that that's a huge accomplishment for me because I've been putting that off for months. It's been about a year since I started it last. And actually, in a video I did a few weeks ago, I included uh, that as one of the tasks or chores that I needed to do. So. Thumbs up for me, I started my generator. Now I'm ready for that snow, not the snow, for that freezing rain we're supposed to get here. It's a beautiful night out. The moon is out. This is how I like it. Nice and peaceful. No snow blowers, no dogs barking. Neighbor could turn the lights down a bit. That'd be better. <laughs> Well, right now it is a little past 11 a.m. on Thursday morning. So today is ketamine day, another two hours, just less than two hours. I get my 10th treatment, I think it is. No, 11th. I get my 11th uh, treatment today. So we'll see how that goes. I'm a little anxious. But this guy, he helps. He takes the edge off, that's for sure. Waiting for my cab now. So I have a lot of anticipatory anxiety over this one today. Very anxious. Uh, I don't know if that anxiety is just uh, residual anxiety from the crap I've been dealing with the last few days or not but either way I have it but uh, I was chatting with my daughter and she actually said one thing to me that kind of uh, helped uh, almost settle my anxiety a little bit she mentioned that uh, she was reading up on ketamine treatment and apparently in some people like when you're going through the treatment, the ketamine is doing something to your brain and you and you end up getting all all these different emotions. Like your brain is trying to process things differently because the ketamine is doing something to it. And sometimes that processing of different emotions can make things seem make things seem even worse. So maybe that's the case. Uh, we'll see. But either way, I think I might need an Ativan today before this session because uh, yeah, agitated, restless, everything. So here we go. Can't forget my headphones. 
One thing I notice is that when the cab is 10 minutes early, I get a little frustrated because he's too early. And when they're not early, I get restless and worried that they're not going to show up. It's a catch-22. The fact that we Well, I made it on time. Ten minutes to spare. I'm good. Home sweet home. So once again, she took my blood pressure. That's all good. So she's gone to get the dose now for me. First dose is in, but most importantly, she brought my Tic Tacs. The second dose has been administered. Now I just wait five more minutes for my third. So I just finished my third nasal spray in each nostril. Now I'm, uh, I'm gonna shut down here now and uh, enjoy the benefits of this because uh, it's hitting me now. Well, the treatment itself is all finished. What happens now is I have to sit around in this room for a while to wait and basically sober up. This is like a mental health psych drunk tank. There we go, drunk tank. <laughs> Listen to the sounds, whatever they might be. Feel the sensations in the body, feel the breathing. Feel the sense of presence. Sometimes you got to go through the motions right because uh, I just went for that walk and it done nothing for me really. I'm just as annoyed and agitated as I was before I left. But I'll keep pushing it. Next thing on my list is to try and read for a little bit. It's another one of those activation exercises that I got to try to do. Go medicate first. That's why the snow was melting nicely. It's about three or four degrees. Keep going. Do you wanna see why I never do any home projects? That hinge would uh, start coming off every time I try to close the door because there's a little bit of ice in that on it. So I figured I'd put longer screws in to give it more hold. There's my longer screws. Yeah. And do you know what the worst part of all that is? I didn't even fix the door. It's uh, still not functioning the way it should tomorrow. Come on. There we go. Now I'm ready to read. Before I do read, I probably should give myself credit for actually attempting to fix that door because it's been a couple days now and I've been walking away from it and most tasks end up being shoved aside for multiple months, maybe even years. So at least I tried. And while sitting here, I think I might have came up with a solution. Simply move the hinge up slightly so, the, so there can be uh, fresh wood for the threads. Mm. There we go. All right, back to Stephen King. But first, 
I got to get this ready for me and the dog. Nature sounds. There we go. We'll go with chirping birds in the morning. Now we're set. The joys of getting old. There we go. To simplify this book, so far it's about a young man trying to save the life of a dog. That's it. That's all it's about. Stephen King style, though. Going to go try again. See what happens this time. In order for me to fix it, it would require an extra step. As you can see, the hinges are cut out. So for me to move the hinge over here, I would have to cut it out a bit. And that is a huge obstacle for me because I just don't feel comfortable doing it. It's weird how that works. But anyway, it's shut now. The ice melted. And it'll melt again tomorrow, so... I'm good until I need to fix it again. Yeah, as I said before, peanut butter is my comfort food. It's my addiction, really. I'm serious. This stuff, it's it's like crack. <laughs> the way it uh, the way it affects you. Like I know when I'm down and depressed and anxious and worked up <clears throat> and I take a few spoonfuls of this, it satisfies something. It does something and it feels so good. And uh, that's the addictive side of it. Yeah, there's uh, doesn't have to be just drugs that you're addicted to. Food, definitely. It's like clockwork. About five minutes after the binge, you start feeling like crap and you feel guilty. You start beating yourself up for uh, for just uh, for binging on whatever it is you binge. Like I had those few spoonfuls of peanut butter and I feel disgusted right now. Just realized I forgot to toss out the poop bag. It's great that I pick it up, but can't leave it in the porch. One of my favorite quick meals from Costco. These little chicken bites are pretty good. They got a good kick to them. These are already fully cooked, so you don't have to worry about killing yourself or anything. But uh, you usually do have to heat them up for about 20 minutes or so. I like to uh, put mine on the air fryer for 25 minutes. That usually gives them, makes them nice and crispy. One of my least favorite things, recycling. I hate dealing with it. It's annoying, <laughs> it's repetitive. Saving the environment, one peanut butter tub at a time. That's what I'm doing. And remember, sometimes it's just a symptom of being human. Well, the last few weeks or so, music is something that I haven't really been embracing as much. I'm a music lover. Like, I got my first cassette still here from 1984. And <clears throat> I usually listen to average about eight hours of music a day. And lately, it's been no music or barely any music but I'm just listening to The Symptom of Being Human by Shinedown I should turn it down before the copyright gets cut uh, listening to Symptom of Being Human by Shinedown and emotions came back like, I haven't felt this in a bit and I'm, I'm, it's good, it's a good thing. Yeah, I'm teary-eyed and all that because the music got to me. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know 
<laughs> what this means, but uh, I don't even know why I'm telling you this. It's just, uh, I guess it's just uh, another one of those things just that I noticed in my process. Yeah, I turned away from music and uh, I need it back because music is so important to me. It's, uh, it's, it's up there with my writing and and getting out with in nature and uh and it's out of reach right now so i'm hoping that it's back in reach and uh anyway on that note i think i'm going to end this week's uh video sorry the lights on the tv went dark so i think i'm going to end this video and uh again thanks for watching and i'll see you for my next week of treatment